Well, folks, hope you're having a great day today. Today, I want to talk to you about um, Clark Ashton Smith, one of my favorite fantasy writers of all time. Um, and what I want to do is, is do a slightly different kind of a video for you. Um, he has written so many different works, um, and we have reviewed one of his works already, The Seven Gashes, which I'll link to you below. Um, so you can check it out after this. But I want to kind of pause um, a little bit on his stuff, kind of go over his life a little bit more detail than you get in that video. Um, and specifically, what I want to talk about is why I think most people who are fantasy fans have just never heard of Clark Ashton Smith. I think he was mispublished. I think he's still being main mispublished today. Um, so let's kind of take a look at him. So, Clark Ashton Smith was, was one of the most was the most prolific writer for Weird Tales and other similar magazines from about thirty to thirty five, um, which is when it, you know Robert E. Howard was putting out the most of his work. He died in thirty six um, at the age of thirty. Um, Lovecraft was also putting out a lot of his works too. He died at thirty seven um, in, in, in his early forties, um, and so both of them. All three of these were sort of seen as this triumvirate of these great writers for Weird Tales and other people of the day. And they were all kind of really kind of seen as these, you know, just in incredibly well gifted, talented uh, people who had, um, while they were writing, had a number of people that would sort of copy their stuff. You know, for example, you can go out and read stories that were written at the same time as Lovecraft that aren't even in the Cthulhu mythos that are clearly inspired by, uh, you know, for example, the Call of Cthulhu. You can read a short story called The Scourge of Behemoth, um, which was written, um, you know, maybe six months later, that reads very much like the Gulf of <laughs> Only the military has an answer to it, um, so it has a slightly different ending. But it's basically a Call of Cthulhu story. Um, and so you can go out there and read these sort of stories that are out there, um, you know, at the same time. Conan, tons of Conan stuff has gotten written after Robert E. Ha while Howard was still writing Conan stuff, uh, and so forth. So all these, pe these, these people were very influential. Now, you've heard of Robert E. Howard, probably, because you've heard of Conan, you've heard of his other stuff out there. He's a great writer. And even though he died at the age of 30 and he didn't write as much as some of the other people did, his stuff was good. It was prolific. It was strong. Um, it definitely resonated with people then and remains to today. And he was also published correctly, which we're going to be talking about a little bit. H.P. Lovecraft, you will also probably have heard of too because of how... Uh, well, he was published after he died. He, his stuff, many of his things weren't published during his lifetime, uh, or they were published in small little magazines or in small numbers like the. Um, and so some and some of his best works, like The Shadow Over In's Mouth, was never published until after he died. Um, and so um, he was published well um, and published and published in, in enough numbers that people would know who he is. Um, and Clark Ashton Smith was not. He died much later in the 60s, um, when he was in his late 60s, I think he was 67 or 68 when he passed away in the early 60s. Um, and when he died, um, for the last two or three decades of his life, he kind of turned away from writing literature. Uh, he was doing a lot more other things with art, like statues, and, and he was also doing some poetry and stuff. He only wrote for a short period of time, actually, because he didn't start out as a writer. Um, he started r r out doing other sorts of uh, fiction and, and art, uh, and it was suggested to him that he start that he moves towards trying to write and sell things, and he does, and he commits to it for about 10 or 15 years. He puts out a lot of stuff during that, but then he kind of moves away from it. So I think um, as a result, he's not, even though he's living much longer after his great works are over with, um, he's not continuing to publish his stuff, so his name's not out there as much. I think that, that definitely hurts. Um, also, the copyrights for many of his things are still held, whereas the other folks, you know, for example, Lovecraft stuff's in the public domain. Um, and there's some debate as to whether Howard stuff's in the public domain or not. In some places, it's all published on online, and in some places, his stuff is owned. Um, so there's a uh, current debate in the among folks as to whether or not his works are not in the public domain. But... Um, Certainly Smiths are not. Um, and again, he was considered this great writer. And Clark Ashton Smith is great at writing worlds. That's kind of what he does. That's kind of his thing. Uh, whereas uh, Robert E. Howard has these great mythic heroes um, uh, he had, that, are, that are very, very strong. And H.P. Lovecraft has these very evocative horror stories um, that have this cosmic horror that sort of really sort of um, resonates uh, with this high level of horror. Um, and, and both of those have, are masters at those things. Um, Clark Ashton Smith is definitely a master at building worlds. He's one of the earliest fantasists that were, can really create a lot of these different sort of worlds. Um, and so, uh, what what you, the problem though is is that he was never sort of published with those works in place. And let me give you sort of a, a sort of an counter example to that. Let me show you kind of Robert E. Howard. So again, Robert E. Howard was a famous fantasy writer. Wrote tons of short stories and in genres outside of fantasy, um, horror, and other things too. Um, but he was the, he's definitely what he's known for today, right? So if I want to go out and buy 
some of his Conan stories and kind of read them. I can. There are multiple collections out there for Robert E. Howard's Conan stories. In fact, you can read them all in just a few bucks. You can go out there, pick up a few books, and read all of his Conan short stories. Even there's a lot of them because of how you know resonant it was. But you can go out there and read them. And if you want to read his other stuff, you can too. For example, I really like Call, um, the character Call. So you can go read all of his Call stories in one novel. There it is. Um, if you want to read all of his Solomon Cain stories, um, who's probably my actual favorite character uh, by him, you can. Right there it is. One one novel. Go out there and pick it up. It collects all of his stories in one place. And that's, I think, incredibly important in kind of following somebody today. If I want to go out and follow a writer and check them out and go check out their books, right, and, and check out one of their works, it's going to be a whole lot easier for me um, to go out there and just pick up all the stuff that's in one world. And he's obviously not the only writer who does that, too, right? For example, you could look at somebody like Michael Moorcock, who has written a ton of different things. And so, for example, let's say I want Justin Michael Moorcock stuff that's, that features the character Quorum. Well, there it is right there. Car books, one book. And that's the same thing with all these different worlds that he writes too. Uh, the Von Beck series, uh, the very, there's only two or three Elric collections because there's not that many Elric books. Um, Hawkmoon stuff and so forth. So you can buy these collections that have all that people, all the things in that world or that start, feature that character in them. And that's how people tend to be published to this day. But that's not how Clark Ashton Smith was published. And I think that's very damning to his uh, ability to have people remember who he is. Because you don't remember who he is if he's not going to be, you know, if you can't go out there and buy his stuff, you know, pretty easily. For example, if you want to go out and buy all of his books, set, if you want to read all the stories set in Hyperborea, and that's it, it's not easy to go out and buy a Hyperborea collection. Um, you know, I, I had to... Uh, by so, so I, I have a few Clark Ashton Smith works like he was mass published in kind of this Although many of his best works are actually missing from this sort of penguin classic because a lot of it, it spends a lot of time on his poetry um, But if I want to go out and buy all of his Hyperborea stories, for example, here's my sort of um, you know off the press <laughs> uh, Third hand, you know copy and I also had to do it for these other things too um, The only time where he was ever sort of published in, 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 in a good way was in the early 70s um, by editor Lynn Carter, who would, who would publish them one, one sort of world at a time and put all of the collections in one. But that was only a short time. Even today, if you wanted to go out and buy, uh, you would have to buy, um, I, I checked it out before doing this video, you would have to buy five or six books in these big giant collections that collect all of his fantasy stuff into one. And they don't, they don't have like, a, you know, like the full fantasy uh, collection of, of Clark Ashton Smith, Volume 1, you know, his, his, his of Warren's stories, Volume 2, his Zothique cycle, Volume 3, his, uh, you know, Hyperborea stories and such, or, and separate them up by worlds. They haven't done that. Um, and so as a result, um, you can't go out and buy and check out just one of his books. You have to, you have to buy. And, and then otherwise, they'll have these big, giant, expensive books that are kind of, um, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, that can cost way too much money uh, for a small level budget um, that are clearly just kind of you know, these, these big charisma kind of projects that aren't kind of designed to really sell to everybody. So I don't think he was ever really published well. And for that reason, I don't think you know who he is because he wasn't published well, right? Um, and again, it's not, it's not public domain. You can't go out there and kind of look it up on Project Gutenberg or something and just read it because um, it's not public domain. He died later and it was, I don't think the rights were published well. Uh, um, so you would have to go out and pick up all these different things and even the Penguin Classics doesn't have some of his best stories in it. Um, so it was most iconic stories in it. So it's not very classic from where I'm sitting. <laughs> so you don't have these uh, great stories. And again, you don't have these collections of these different sort of uh, stories. So in order to kind of do it, how do, how do you do it? Where do you start? Uh, well, you could pick up a five or six collection series of his stuff uh, or, you know, the more expensive, you know, hardcover stuff that'll do it for you. Um, or what I like to do is actually just kind of pick up the 1970s books uh, for the ones that were published. Um, you can pick those up probably for about five or six dollars because they were mass market. That's really kind of the only time that, that happened. Um, you can also pick up stuff, you know, today, of course, that's not published if it's from places like Amazon uh, that you can just kind of read like as a PDF or as a downloadable e-reader. So you, you do have that as an option if you don't want to, you know, spend so much money for the, the big giant prestige format stuff that costs a lot of money um, that are basically how he was published for a long time. So again, my issue that is that he just was not published well. And that's why 
most fantasy writers, I believe, do not know who he is today. Because he was, everybody who talks about him, who's experienced him, who's read his stuff, says, this guy's a good writer. His stuff is a very, very strong. Uh, and it's been very influential, not only then, um, but also through today. For example, uh, in The Seven Geshes, I show um, and, and talk about how influential he was on the earliest Dungeons and Dragons stories. Um, his one of his classics from the 30s, The Seven Geshes, is, is actually not only is the the, the, the that spell uh, one of the starting spells uh, in in Dungeons and Dragons, but the, it's one of the earliest dungeon delve fantasy stories out there, um, and it definitely seems like early Dungeons and Dragons is definitely um, following a lot of the things it does, including that sort of um, ending at the end. So. You know, if, I'll, again, I'll link you to that video below so you can check it out if you want to read that, read that story. Um, and I will try to link you to some collections of Robert Ashton Smith uh, that are out there uh, in case there's something that you might be interested in picking up and following. He's a great writer, though. But again, I think you've never heard of him. If, if you've never heard of him or you've never had you know, him kind of in, described with this as this impactful writer, I think it was because of these missed opportunities by the people who publish his works. Um, and that's the reason why I don't think it, it's far to this day, which is sad, because his stuff definitely should have. Um, it's really good. And he, his stuff should be up there with uh, Robert E. Howard and Michael Moorcock and uh, and uh, Tolkien and all these others. He is one of the best writers out there. His stuff is so good, so influential. And I think it should be like a, an automatic reading for like any fantasy course, <laughs> uh, fantasy aficionado. So uh, again, I'm giving him to you now. I'm telling you about why I think you don't know about much about him. Um, if, have you read stuff by Clark Ashton Smith? Um, it's the first time you heard about him uh, in this video or in the video that I, that I published a little while ago. Um, that's fine. Check them out. You're going to like them a lot. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think of him. If you think he's overrated, if you think he's overblown. And this is a guy who read a dictionary from start to finish um, and an encyclopedia multiple times. So he uses a lot of that stuff that he learned. He had this eidactic memory. Um, so if you're like, you think he's overblown because he'll use words that you have to always go look up in the dictionary because I don't know what that word means. <laughs> um, or just kind of ignore it or, or hope that you figured it out from context clues. Uh, that's fine. I, I understand that if you think that. Yeah. Uh, but if but if you uh, if you've encountered it, I'd love to talk to you about it more. What are your favorite stories by him? Um, what do you think of his writing style? It's very unique. Uh, do you think of it, do you think it's as good as my own? Um, do you think it was mispublished too? Um, and so forth. So I'd be happy to uh, to engage with you on this topic one way or the other in the comments below. If you like this video, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. This is actually the third video I've recorded in the last hour. Um, that's how much I love this channel and the various videos that we're doing. So there's going to be lots more stuff to follow. Reviews. Uh, as well as analyses and stuff like this where I kind of give you the context of a writer. Um, so again, thank you. If you've watched all this video, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to invest in my video. I really do appreciate it. You all have a great day.